Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to craft the absolute simplest ME system possible in the mod. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to craft quite a few new things, uh, two of which are, you're going to be crafting a whole lot of, and one of which you may actually never craft. So, uh, let's get started. So, the simplest ME system possible in the entire mod is simply to just use this thing, the ME chest. Um, the ME chest is just a powerful chest. It can hold a lot of stuff, but it is still just a chest. However, if I right click on the chest right now, it'll say it cannot restore itself. We'll also need to craft that. So, first things first, let's take a look at how to craft the ME chest. The ME chest is crafted using either a pure or a normal Fluix crystal, although I will always recommend you use pure for anything that can that can use pure. Uh, two iron ingots, two ME glass cables, two glass, and an ME terminal, which we'll take a look at how to craft in a moment. Or, well, right now. The ME terminal is something that you're going to need for the advanced ME systems, but you're also going to need to craft one just to make the ME chest if you choose to go that way. The ME terminal is crafted like so. You need one of those logic processors from uh, the previous episode, which is why we had to cover that first, because you need a lot of these things. You also need an illuminated panel, and a formation, and annihilation core. You're going to need to craft a lot of these two things, so uh, get used to it. Uh, taking a look first at the illuminated panel, there are actually three variants, and uh, they'll just, all they do is determine the aesthetics of the panel that you've crafted. So first, we'll take a look at how to craft the illuminated panel. You need three quartz glass along the right-hand side. You need a redstone in the middle, a glowstone dust on the top and the bottom, and an iron ingot on the left. That actually makes three illuminated panels. So, yeah, you get a lot of mileage out of this recipe. Once you have an illuminated panel, you can choose to turn it into either a dark illuminated panel, which looks like that, or a bright illuminated panel, which looks like that. All you have to do is put the illuminated panel into your uh, crafting square and you can pull out a different version. It simply changes how bright the uh, resulting terminal is. So, you know, you might want to use, you know, it just depends on what color scheme you like or which terminal you think looks the nicest. I'd probably go with the bright one most of the time myself, because I like it. Next, the formation and annihilation cores. They're both extremely similar in their recipes. You'll need uh, these for, for anything that interfaces with items in the ME system. So yeah, we're going to look at how to... Uh, when we start talking about auto-crafting, these are some of the first things we'll want to auto-craft. Formation cores are crafted using a logic processor, a Fluix dust, and a Certus Quartz crystal. You don't have to use Pure, but again, I recommend it, because they aren't used for as many things as the normal ones. And then, that will give you two formation cores, so thankfully, you at least get two of them. For the number of these you're going to have to craft, that will be a godsend. The Annihilation Core is almost identical with a Logic Processor, Fluix Dust, but instead of a Certus Crystal, it requires Nether Quartz Crystal. You don't have to use pure Nether Quartz Crystal, you can also use a normal piece of Nether Quartz. And for Nether Quartz, it really doesn't matter, because uh, you, know, you can get a lot of that from the nether. It's a lot more common than uh, Sturtis Quartz is. So now we have all of that. You can craft your terminal, you can craft your chest, but like we saw earlier, uh, even once you give the chest power, because you do have to give the chest some power somehow, it uh, you can't open it. It says it needs a storage cell. That's what this thing on the side is. If we right click on this, we'll see there's a slot here. There's also a priority button. We'll get into that later. There's a slot here. You need to put an ME storage cell in there, like I have in my inventory. In order to craft one of those, we go over here. So ME storage cells are the backbone of the ME network. It's what you use to actually store the items. Um, there's multiple different sizes, but in this video we're just going to take a look at the 1K ME storage cell. In a future video we'll go over all the storage cells and how to craft them. 
So the ME1K store. Why did this get messed up? Stupid recipe. It got screwed up. Wait. Wait, I can fix it? There. I don't know why it got messed up. So the uh, the ME1K storage cell is crafted using three iron ingots, three pieces of redstone dust, two quartz glass, and a 1K ME storage component. And that is right over here. And it's crafted equally simply with a logic processor, four certus quartz crystals, and four redstone dust. Again, these do not have to be pure, but I would recommend it. Once you have that and you have your drives uh, built, you can come over here and you can use your ME chest. It's at this point that I'd like to point out that it's probably going to be worth your while to craft an energy cell. It's really, really simple to craft one of these and it'll definitely help running your system. It'll, it'll, you know, make sure that it doesn't immediately go down due to an energy shortage, which might lock you out of all your items. Energy cell is crafted simply with a piece of quartz glass, four fluix dust, and four quartz crystals. Again, sort of quartz crystals. Again, you don't need to use pure, but I would. So now that you have all that, you can use, you don't need this, the energy cell, I just recommend it. You can use your ME chest. The way you do it is by right clicking it into on the side of the chest and then placing it in this little uh, opening. You can see that the drive slots into the side of the chest, which is nice. And then the top of the chest changes and it looks like an ME terminal. And, and that's why you needed an ME terminal attached to it. Now, we can use this ME terminal to look at what's inside the chest. Currently nothing. But we can throw some stuff in there. No, nope, I don't want to sort. I want to put them in the chest. Now you have some stuff in the chest. If we go and look at the side, we can see there's currently 48 of 1024 bytes used and 3 of 63 types. We'll start talking about this a bit later as well, but the main thing you need to know is that the each ME storage cell has a limited number of different items that can go in it, which is types, and a maximum value, a number of items, which is bytes. So we have, if I look at the top, we have uh, three stacks of 64 items in there, and that's currently using 48 bytes and three types. We can also look at this from the ME terminal over here just because we've got it connected just as part of our little display. But you don't need this. If you have the chest, you can just open the chest up, pull stuff out, check the drawer, drive. Look, there's eight bytes le uh, less being used. That's how this goes. So this is the absolute basic, most simple ME system possible in the mod. It's just an ME chest with a drive in it connected to a power source. That's it. Get this out of here. We don't want that. This is the simplest you can possibly get. It's not extremely useful, and oftentimes when I use Planergistics, I completely skip the chest and don't even make one. But it, you can, it can be useful just to gain access to a large amount of items. Say you have a, a big drive that has a lot of items in it. You want to take those items to another location to build a new base. You want to quickly get the base set up. You bring a ch ME chest with you. You drop it down with a powered energy cell, you slap a drive in it, and right off the bat, you've got access to all your items. That's basically the, the goal of the enemy chest. It gives you easy access to your items. Still needs power, though. Anyway, that's basically it for this video. In future episodes, we'll, of course, continue to take a look at the other things. Now that we've talked about the enemy chest, in the next episode, we're going to talk about the enemy drive and setting up a, you know, the beginnings of a more advanced... Emmy system. We'll also talk about import and export buses. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.